good evening again we will begin with a short introduction of the judges uh, mr amir bhavani sir we are very pleased to have you here today with many years of enriching experience in the field of law and after playing a significant role at various organizational levels with leading law firms amir bhavani sir has started his own law office in november 21 ab legal he brings with him a sound background in dispute resolution mechanisms especially concerning aspects of company act and insolvency and bankruptcy code he regularly appears before various judicial quasi judicial authorities including high courts debt recovery tribunal nclt and nclat he advises significant number of companies creditors insolvency professionals and other stakeholders to effectively deal with the aspects of corporate insolvency and restructuring process we're very glad to have you here sir thank you so much now we shall proceed with the introduction of manav jessel thomas sir manav jessel thomas sir is named partner at the firm of thomas george and associates immediately after finishing his law from ils law college he joined the firm his area of work includes litigation in the area of civil criminal family land commercial and other matters Manav Jessel Thomas sir has been handling litigation matters before varied forums including the Supreme Court High Court of Telangana Andhra Pradesh district courts throughout India and other statutory tribunals and quasi forums we are very pleased to have you too sir we Thank shall you. proceed with the quarter final rounds the petitioners can present their case could you please repeat the uh, rules for the timing yes sir speakers please note that the timing will be similar to the round, to the preliminary rounds each team will be given 30 minutes which is considered to be 15 minutes per speaker if any speaker requires more or less time please indicate so at the beginning of your round 30 seconds are reserved for rebuttals and sir rebuttals shall we start the round amir please yes. please let's proceed petitioner is uh, tga 13 okay Yes, TG thirteen. Yes. Speaker one, please start. Yeah, Lord Chief, just to confirm, is my uh, voice audible? A little. Uh, I think you can just try removing your uh, headphones. Maybe it'll be more clear. Okay. Try speaking without the headphones. Is it? Is it really soft? Yeah, it's. It's a little. Uh, try removing the headphones and try speaking without the headphones. Is it fine now? Lord much Chief? better, much better. Yes. Yes. So uh, the council all six permission to begin. All permissions granted. Please don't ask anymore. Much obliged, Your Lordship. Warm greetings to the Lordships. May it please this honourable court. This is the council appearing on behalf of the petitioners in the case of X Y Z versus the Republic of Parliament. The council seeks permission to address the bench collectively as Your Lordships. Granted, granted. Much obliged, Your Lordship. Would your lordships appreciate a brief perusal of the facts? No, please skip on to your uh, issues. Much obliged, your lordship. Your lordship, the issues in hand in the present case are: issue number one, whether the government is justified in taxing digital currency, digital assets, NFTs, etc., which are not legalized; and issue number two, whether section one one five BBH of the Income Tax Act is violative of the Constitution of Parliament. The council will be dealing with the first issue, while the co-council will be dealing with the second issue. If I may begin with your lordship's view permission. All permissions are granted. You please argue your case. You you continue your arguments. Don't ask for permissions. Much obliged, your lordship. Your lordships, the first issue deals with whether the government is justified in taxing digital currency, digital assets, NFTs, etc., which are not legalized. The council humbly submits before this honourable court that the government is not justified. One second, your lordship. There's a technical glitch. I think. Am I audible, your lordships? Yes, you are loud and clear. Yeah, obliged, your lordships. Apologies for the inconvenience. So, if I may start, the first issue deals with whether the government is justified in taxing digital currency, digital assets, NFTs, etc., which are not legalized. The council humbly submits before this honourable court that the court that the government is not justified in taxing income from virtual digital assets. In the case of Internet and Mobile Association of India, could you please uh, let us know how is non uh, 
how is taxation going to be uh, why do you need to legalize these types of asset there is no requirement under the law to legalize any of the assets yeah uh, much obliged dear lordship the council would like to say that the number of transactions and the number of people who have been indulging in transactions involving virtual digital assets or cryptocurrencies they have been on the rise the the number of people transacting these are it has increased to millions so for the protection of those investors who've been investing in virtual digital assets it would be very helpful if the government could legalize and frame regulations for is it a requirement under law that prior to taxing uh, you have to legalize it is that is there a requirement as such as such there is no requirement then either. then how do you say that you have to legalize it the government is very well justified in non legalizing it the government is very much justified in imposing the tax or lordships but the council is just pleading that since the number of people number of investors investing in no all... just because there are multiple users high amounts involved does that require the government to legalize it is there any requirement as such if there is please show us yes sir lordship i'll just uh, answering to that question uh, in order to approach the court uh, if there is no crypto law in the country then the investors won't be able to approach the court uh, there will be no established legal framework backing which the people could approach the court in all these cases so once they've been legalized or once regulations have been put in the investors or the people please explain what do you mean by approach the court approach the court for what approach the court for anything uh, with regard to um, for example there may there might be a case of defrauding the investors yes you can file a case of cheating under the ipc that is very well open even today ipc is nowhere restrictive of uh, the form of the crime and you have even cyber crimes law you have a cyber crime cell in every state so everything is well in place there is no requirement yeah much obliged to lordship lordship i would like to state that all ipc is there and we also have uh, provisions for preventing cyber crimes but what i would like to point out is there is no specific legislation that is whole heartedly dealing only with the virtual digital assets no but i i have a question i have a direct question which my learner brother is also asking that for the purposes of taxation let us stick to that for the purposes of taxation that's what you are arguing right is it required that there has to be a legislation for the purposes yes or no it is not required for it is not required to legalize so it, it, so so as far as the first question is concerned that whether or not the government is justified in taxing digital currency digital assets which is not legalized the answer is yes they are justified right no i would like the council would like to prove how the government is not justified even after having uh, the rights to impose taxation without legalizing them there are some uh, is you come to that point directly come to that point directly okay so the government while uh, uh, justifying their move to tax these virtual digital assets they stated that they consider the income from all these transactions to be speculation business now section 43 sub clause 5 of the income tax act deals with speculative transactions and it states, is it a part of your is it a part of your submission then please yes. run us through which page number in the memorial lordship page number page number in the memorial it is page number in the nine. memorial yeah page number 9 yes dealing with the first issue yes no but read out what are you reading now which which section are you reading now the issue which uh, the section forty five you were dealing with. Sorry, a lot, sir. Are you dealing with section forty five? Section forty three sub clause five. Ah, uh, what does it say? It, is it mentioned in your memorial? Is there yes, is there yes, a? Yes, a lot, sir. It is mentioned. Which page? Which page? Sub issue one point two, page number nine. Page number nine, one point two. Sub issue one point two. One point two is page number ten of fifteen. Apologies, your lordship. Actually, in the PDF in my phone, it shows page number. No, it's it's no no no. It's written ten of at 15. the bottom. It's not the PDF. Yeah, it's not the PDF. You have numbered it. It's not the PDF apologies. fault. Apologies, your lordship. Apologies, very apologies. Yeah. So it yeah, ten. Under... Yeah, carry on now. Yeah, it is under the sub issue one point two, which states that unfounded justification given by the government. So, Section okay. forty three, sub clause five of the Income Tax Act 
deals with what is section 43 deal with specifically Spe uh, speculative transactions okay and what does 43 phi say it it says that the income from speculative transactions will or will also be taxed at normal rates that is according to the tax lab under which a ta taxpayer falls now how how do you say that cryptocurrency is speculative yeah so i would like the council would like to state that in the present case i'm sorry a lot yeah yeah please go ahead please go ahead yeah so in the present case the government has imposed a taxation of 30% through section 115 bbh of the income tax act now this 30% taxation is imposed on all the investors irrespective of the tax bracket in which they fall but according to section 435 speculative transactions are also taxed at normal rates that is in the tax lab in which a particular investor would fall that would mean that a person who is earning higher incomes from virtual digital assets will pay taxes at higher rates but a person who is uh, earning lower incomes from them will respectively pay taxes. i i would like i would like you to repeat on what what is your statement on uh, speculative how is cryptocurrency speculative yeah so guys, I, I'll just repeat that. So the government while imposing taxes on virtual digital assets in these cases, in this case states that uh, the income from VDS will be taxed at 30% net. That is all the investors who are gaining any income from virtual digital asset transactions will be required to pay uh, income taxes at 30%. But according to speculative, according to section 43.5, which deals with speculative transactions, the people as the investors are supposed to pay the income taxes only on the basis of the tax lab under which a particular taxpayer falls. Council, you are missing the point. We know that speculative basis, there is some benefits given. We are asking you for cryptocurrency. How do you say that it falls under speculation? The government has justified that they uh, assume all these transactions involving virtual digital assets to be digital uh, to be speculative transactions. Where do they say so? It was it was given in the memorandum of. Uh, um, can I just memorandum? Is it there in the mood proposition? It is not there in the mood proposition. So then it is not. So who said that all uh, digital currencies are speculation? The the uh, justification that was given by the government while imposing such taxes, it was said. That they are considered to be speculative. In the price. memorandum of the respondent, you're saying? No. Then from where do you get this statement? It, it is a statement which was made by the finance minister while presenting that they consider all these to be speculative transactions. Okay, okay, got it. So it's only a statement of the minister. There is no law on the it same. Is, it is the statement of the finance now, minister. Now, so many statements will be made by ministers in the houses and on uh, various... Uh, different platforms are we supposed to consider them even a law or even consider their statements in the courts now but still uh, your logic the investors who are investing in virtual digital assets they'll be uh, they'll be listening to all these statements and these statements have an impact on how they think and next you'll next you'll come with the statement that all the political ministers making statements in uh, political rallies before election also should be considered here that's not the law you have to argue on the law where is it written? If it's not written, please don't say so. Okay, Do you have any other arguments on the same? Yes, yes, a lordship. So, your lordship, section 2, subclause 14 of the Income Tax Act deals with capital assets. Now, in the proviso of same section, it is pointed out that, the, that any work of art is also considered as a capital asset. NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens, require they are unique. Explain non-fungible tokens. They are unique cryptographic tokens, your lordship, and they please, please, please go and explain further. Yeah, so they exist only in the digital form. There is no physical copy of them, and they are digitized. They are basically digitized pieces of artwork that a person can tokenize onto a blockchain, and it can be bought and sold. So what is this blockchain? So these NFTs can be tokenized on a blockchain. And they can be purchased by art collectors or they can be bought or they can be sold. Please, by please simplify. Please simplify this technical knowledge. We, we, yes. we are a bench unaware of technical matters. So you please simplify. What is a blockchain? Much obliged, what do lordship. you mean by a token being put on a blockchain? Please explain that concept. Yes, your lordship. So NFT is basically a piece of artwork, your lordship. But this piece of artwork does not exist in the physical form. 
do not repeat counsel it is a right. piece of artwork it is not there and it will be placed in the blockchain other than this could you explain what is this process they, yeah um, very uh, i apologize for uh, repeating the statement your ship i would just say that it is it is it is possible for nfts to be transacted digitally that is i can send it from my phone to anyone else's phone who is willing to buy the nft from me so i would not be selling a physical copy of it a digitized copy of it would be sold okay now all this being said all this being said uh why do you say that there is a requirement to legalize it let us go back to the issue is there a requirement speculative basis we do not consider your argument on that is there any other justification that you need to legalize it first any for legalizing the nfts you mean yes yeah. the taxation part we are still on the first question right for for taxation you want you are saying that it needs to be legalized we 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 are stating that regulation should be brought into in order to regulate virtual digital assets so only so only when it is regulated then only the government can tax it that's your argument otherwise that's government true. cannot tax it then what's what's the rationale see when when we ask you about why it is to be taxed you are going about investor safety but safety is not a concern for taxation right you do a business is it is it a concern of the government that your business is safe the yeah, lordship what i was what i'm trying to state is that um, the digital the nfts are being transacted the the number of transactions happening in all of these has been increasing by the day true that is that is for the investors safety perspective how does i mean how do you relate that with the tax purpose Yeah, what is an embargo? I I'll just connect my earphone back because I'm not able to really comprehend. Please do, please do. We we will we will be all right. Please connect, yes. If you want us to speak louder, we'll do that also. No, I'll not say that is. Uh, yeah. So my question is, you are saying that it needs to be regularized for the purposes of investor protection. but the question over which this writ is filed is whether the government is justified in taxing the currencies and assets which are in the digital form without legalizing the same so let us stick to that for investor protection you may have to file a different petition we are not dealing with that only for the purposes of taxation please enlighten us yeah so council would like to state that as the law chips it pointed out it is not required to legalize something in order to tax them but the citizens True. of the but the citizens of the country in this case they were perplexed mm. because there are no regulations and there are no there is no legality that is given to the cryptocurrencies or the transaction so of virtual invest, digital assets if you do not want to exactly risk, don't invest but then but it's then, not a compulsion it's not a compulsion that you will have to have digital assets then only you'll be able to transact no right yes your law chip but The, if the investors choose to invest in that, then they can choose to invest in that, right? Because they feel that. No, it looks like the petitioners here want some moral science being taught. That's not the job of the court. You want to invest, you invest. You do not want to invest, you do not invest. You don't invest. You know, you're trying to say that for someone to invest in the BSC, Sensex, or in stock markets, SEBI should be the, should be there first. SEBI rules and regulations should be first. is it necessary no yeah, rules for taxation are required to tax a business or a transaction they are okay. not required because there's a investor protection and safety is there right yes yes understood your logic i understood your logic so only answer this question very crisply how do you say apart from the grievances of the investors that they are perplexed or they are worried what will happen to their business apart from that do you have any answer yeah your lordship i would just like to put in an instance a hypothetical scenario so please let's just assume that there are no traffic rules or there are no requirements to follow anything given by the government now suddenly mm. one day we just see that there are maybe you know thousands of people who are not wearing their helmets while while mm. driving their two wheelers mm. so what happens mm. in this case is the government comes in and the government says mm. that if you don't wear a helmet you will be fined but mm. before doing, before imposing this fine it is required that the government mm. should state that 
wearing hmm. a helmet while driving a two wheeler is really important and if you violate that acha oh, so for your safety <laughs> and for your life government would have to step in you would not think about your life government no. would tell you that you should be worried about your life and then you will say okay now because you made me aware that i might lose life because i'm not wearing helmet because now you have red lights okay now i'll wear helmet for your own safety purpose you would not right no your lordship's not because of the safety council your uh, uh, example is completely uh, uh, if, like you not even comment could... on its uh, logical part here Uh, council are you aware of the judgments where the court said even if an income is from an illegal business yes. you can tax it yes it okay? is in the case of and that is a settled law by the supreme court this court has said that you can tax income from illegal sources also that being said your amazing example kept aside what what stand do you have to even say that you have to legalize it okay your yeah, lordship then i would like to state that even if the government is being is okay with taxing all these incomes from virtual digital assets what i'm trying to say is how is it justified to tax it equally for all of the people who've been investing in it so it is 30% tax so you're, be- so you're okay with taxing you're having an issue with the uh, the 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 amount of the, the percentage that's all what i'm trying so to- you're trying to say there you're trying to say there has to be a slab system for this as well there has to be a justification for every move that the government is bringing in uh, shall we give an extension of 1 minute yes i just want yeah to yeah know. please answer this yes yes sir see just answer this point when uh if if this your question once you accept that uh, the government can tax so justification in our legal legalizing it is irrelevant now you are going into the second part which is how much it can tax am i correct so you have accepted the point that without legalizing you can tax it clear with the fact that they can tax it without legalizing is 100% true because it is backed by a judgment of the supreme court what the council is wanting to stay is that state is that for any move that the government is taking there should be proper justification so that the citizens of the country are able to understand the motive behind such move so hypothetically now again if this law is covered by that aspect that a person would be taxed as per his tax liability slab annually which is already there you are all right with these transactions being taxed right your lordship what i'm trying to state is um the justification part of impo- don't have the cake and eat it okay you make a statement and stick to it you're just rolling around the same point don't beat around the bush first you accept is it justifiable do you have to legalize it yes or no you say yes but you have to justify why do you have to justify we are on the point of legalizing it nobody is bothered whether the government is justified is legalizing the same required or no for impo- for the purpose of imposing taxation legalizing something is not is not very important for the government and what remains in issue one it has to be rejected the the issue here is that they can tax it but what is the justification they are giving behind imposing 30% of tax now uh, so that's what i answered no so if they do it as per tax slabs you are all right so that fine. also goes and they can imp- they can put in certain regulations that these no why like, why why for why Re- regulations for investor protections again no for just clarifying it to the citizens on the legality of cryptocurrency that they can explicitly state that the council citizens- council buyer beware policy is there in general consumer laws already you have to be aware of whatever you are doing market is always subject to risk whichever market it is so even the uh, cryptocurrency market also is volatile what what else do you need the government cannot come and say that this bitcoin or this cryptocurrency is going to have some troubles right or this is going to uh, uh, it is going to there is going to be financial crisis or inflation is going to affect it we cannot predict no how can the government predict the future if the government cannot predict the future but what government can do whatever income you earn it can tax it even if this law was not there if your income was uh, shown in your uh, online in your ITR, bank account ITR yeah in your itrs it would still be taxed no 
they would say if you if you still have money in your account you have to explain to the government how you received it and definitely have to pay tax on it so yeah the lord said the point you're making is absolutely right the thing okay. is, the point the wrap up in what? 15 seconds that's it 15 seconds and you wrap up okay so cryptocurrencies are actually dynamic and volatile so uh, the number of transactions that have been increasing in them they they show that they are here to stay cryptocurrencies and virtual digital assets are here to stay and it is of utmost importance that parliamento has a has in place a leg, regulatory regime to govern the use of cryptocurrencies so that the thank you council thank you much much obliged thank you let's move on to point number 2 two. yes speaker 2 please go ahead philosophy permissions granted yeah permissions much obliged you lord no more questions of permissions from any of the teams we all have been granted yes much obliged you lord of the council will be dealing with the second issue that whether or not the section 115 bph of the income tax act is violative of the constitution of india it is most humbly present before this honorable court that section council please 115... tell us which sections which articles of the constitution is this violative of Article two sixty five, your lordship, and Article fourteen nineteen. What is two? What What is two sixty five speaking about? No tax shall be levied or collected except by the authority of law. So there is an authority of law which says that you, the government has the power to tax under the schedule, right? Your lordship, the council would like to justify it with a case law presenting that. In the case of R. Gopal Ramanarayan, this is the third income tax officer. The court held that. Which court? Artic- which court judgment? This is of. Your lordship, this is a this is a high court judge here. Which high court? Your lordship, it is a Uttar Pradesh high court. Your lordship, Uttar Pradesh high court, and it was passed. Uh, what were the facts of that case? Your lordship, the thing is, the council is not aware of the facts of the case. What was held? You go ahead. You let, let the court the held, held that the Article two sixty five enjoins in the uh, is that every stage in this uh, in this the entire process must be authorized by the law. This is the Article two sixty five which states that no tax or levy will be collected except by the authority of law. But the court held in that is the entire process must be authorized by the law. So the whatever process that comes under by uh, according to this uh prevail according to this article the entire process on whichever the taxing is takes placing and the rule or the provision of for the tax everything has to be authorized by the law. But council, there is an authority in the law granting the power to the government to tax. That is itself the authorization. What more authorization do you need? You know, Not to be needy authorization based on the legality of the virtual digital asset. That your co-counsel admitted there is no need to legalize it. So you only argue on why this is violative. Your first issue has been rejected because your counsel has conceded to the point. So you tell us how is it violative of the constitution? Much obliged, your lordship. If uh, it is also violating the Article Fourteen of the Constitution uh, in the Finance Bill twenty. 20- In 2022, the Finance Minister of the Bill of Rights, Sita Ramanna, made an attempt to define the virtual digital assets, digital currencies, and all consolidating all the attributes of VLT, which is the distributed ledger technology, and blockchain-like cryptocurrency and NFT, into the definition of virtual digital assets, rather than defining them separately or not. Council, so, do one thing. Section one one five B B H. Do you have that section? You tell specifically which provision under this or which sub clause under this is violative of the constitution. Please, please let us know specifically what does section one one five B B H. Which sub clause do you want us to, you know, uphold our constitution? Section, we are the council is talking about the section uh two forty seven sub clause A of the income tax act. You want to hold section one one five B B H unconstitutional, right? Yes, Which sub clause of section one one five is incorrect? Your lordship, the section the council is not talking about the section one one five. Your lordship, the council is speaking that the on which the tax has been imposed, the virtual digital currency. Council, what is your issue? Your issue is whether or not section one one five B B H of the Act is violative of the Constitution. So you have to only argue on whether one one five B B H is violative or not. Yes, your lordship. But the section one one five B B H is talking about the taxing on thirty percent on virtual digital assets. Which the there is a lack of clarity in the virtual digital assets. So the council. So you argue on this section. No, you are not telling us why this section is wrong. 
you're jumping to other sections. Why is what part of section 115 is wrong, BPH? No, it, it lacks clarity or not. Should the virtual please read, that? please read section 115 BPH. Uh, your Lordship, the council has permission for the convenience of the judges. If I can present section 115 BB, yes, yes, you all can share the screens. Yeah, just a moment. How, in the meantime, uh, speaker, please read. Is it visible, your Lordship? Yes, nice yes, visible now. So this is section 115 BBS of the Yes, uh, speaker two, please tell us which part of this provision is wrong. Or violative at least. Your Lordship, the uh, third, the third one, your Lordship. The purpose of section, the word transfer, which find and so on, so shall apply How? to any. Why is it How? wrong? Your Lordship, the council would like like to emphasize on the virtual digital assets, it lacks clarity. We can't combine everything under the virtual digital assets, your lot, because they are having different features. The NFT, uh, the cryptocurrencies, they have different features and they cannot be equally taxation. So again, the same question. If there is a, a no, demarcation, rate. then they can tax it, right? So over there, there was stab. Over here, now it's a demarcation that for NFT, this much for uh, crypto this much right so if they give a differentiation or a differential treatment you're all right with that being taxed but right. yes, yes, but yes. but counseling right. uh, virtual digital asset is explained in section 2 subclause 47a is that definition not sufficient no your lord so it lacks clarity and it is vague here. what is section 2 subclause 47a are you aware one minute your lordship are you using are you searching the provision of law on net now or you are actually aware of the provision? No, your lord should be aware of the provision. Yeah, so how is it? How is that provision vague? It's very clear. No, your lord should your council would like to give the instance. For instance, the cryptocurrency is fungible in nature, your lordship, and its value changes as the community involved uh, in its transaction and its worth fluctuates with the increase and decrease in supply. Further, the transaction of specific crypto tokens uh, can only to take only its restricted ecosystem or a marketplace. For example, the Ethereum cannot be used for any transaction in the Bitcoin ecosystem. In this ecosystem, an end user requests for the token and the miners on the other end time for this request put into a block your lordship. So the council would like to emphasize the requests are stored in the cryptocurrencies code in the block. Another group of miners or mines, these codes and ones found out are in the another block that makes gone, a blockchain your lordship. You have gone very hyper technical without, without explaining you're just reading the same manner in which your previous council was reading. We are not able to understand where is the illegality on 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 this section you say it is vague uh, just because the yes. section is vague can we uh, hold it unconstitutional no but so you are saying absence of intelligible differentia of, of the vds so again my yes. question is just answer that if there is a demarcation or a differentiation of treatment of, of all the digital assets you are all right with the tax regime right it's only violative as far only violet you can close the screen sharing it's only violative as far as the differentiation is concerned right if it is yes. because that's what you are arguing so you are trying to say if something is like for an example let us say that uh, the bitcoin is taxed at uh, 10% and uh, nfts are taxed at 5 because that's a gifting thing so that yes. is all right with you you are all yes. right with that right yes you are right okay good very well so that is only violative. That's the only yes, question. Sir. Yes, you know. So if they, if, if they gave a demarcation, your problem is solved. Your uh, friend's problem is solved if there's a tax then. Yes, you know. There ends the matter. Yes, you know. For, for, so for an example, without asking the, the government side, if they say that they are agreeable to these two things, then this writ can be disposed of today, right? Yes, you know. Very well. I don't have any further questions. Your Lordship, the council would like to 
the council can start the submission to your lodge. If your lodge, if your lodge is satisfied with uh, with the answer of the council. Uh, no, no, I am satisfied only. I am only satisfied with my question. You have categorically stated now that if there is a differentiation, you are all right with the tax. Have there been instances, council, where just because the slab rates were not fixed in under the income tax regime, the said section was uh, upheld or uh, uh, held unconstitutional? Have there been any instance uh, till today? Is there any precedent? Uh, no, your lordship, the council please ignore it. For that. So just because a slab rate is missing, they can just issue a clarification uh, or an explanation. Exactly. Uh, they may agree right now and then the, the, it can be disposed of as simple as that with that direction. It may not survive. Uh, you, you do not even need to issue a law, right? If my uh, judge, uh, co-judge also believes, my brother judge true. believes, they can just issue a clarification note and uh, the whole uh, purpose of this writ would uh, yes. Be yes, please proceed if you have any other statements to make. If you have please any other know. thing, uh, yes, please. And also, it violates the Article 191G of the Constitution. Yeah, so the 14 and 191G would go hand in hand. True. The council can proceed, your lot. About, I mean, 19 is all right. I mean, next is. So, council, you have no issues with the lack of set off, uh, no deductions for uh, expenditures, uh, whether you gain income or you lose income. There is a tax for you. You have no issue with all these points. Speaker 1, your turn is over. You cannot speak anymore. Yes, Speaker 2, you have no issue with the provisions of the law which says that you are not permitted set off. You cannot carry forward your loss to the next year. You cannot be given deduction on expenditures for set off of losses. Huh? You don't have any issue with all these provisions. Right? No, you only no. want a tax lab. Okay. Nothing survives in this rate, I think. Yes, any other submissions do you have? Speaker? Your Lordship, no? that uh, because and so because it's violates the article 14 and 19, the ends the constitution, uh, ends the section can be stated as Haldra virus, Your Lordship. Further, in the case law, as has been mentioned in Smith, Ojibai versus the state of Uttar Pradesh, the court held that the imposition of tax without the authority of law and being the store threat by the state by using a crochet machine of imputed act to realize this from the appellant is a sufficient infringement of his fundamental right under Article 19, Panchi, and was clearly entitled to relief under the Article 32 of the Constitution. Based on these arguments, since the section is vague and unreasonably classified and lacks clarity, the imposition of tax section of 115 ends it stated as a uh, Haldra virus and unconstitutional stats. Further, the council asks for extension or two minutes to complete the final submission of my. No, no, for the no. extension. No, but I just have a question now. What were the facts of this case wherein you have stated that they were not backed by law? What was, what was being taxed and what was not backed by law in this case, which you just cited? Your Lordship, the which which is it will deal with the Croatian machine, your Lordship, which is they are stating that the imposition what, of what tax machine? Is, what machine? Crow reshave machine, your Lordship. Close shave. Yeah. Close shave machine. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. So what's the citation? That, can you please please repeat? And is it is it part of your uh, pleadings? Yes, your Lordship. Where it is? Can you number, please? Uh, page number 13. Uh page number. 13 2.3 of submission 2.3. Okay, so there's this uh, Ujjambai. Ujjambai versus state of UP. Yes, your lordship. Coercive using the coercive machinery, not close shave, no close shave, man. It's coercive, coercive machinery of, of the impune act to re realize that it is. This was uh, by whom? Which judge and which court? Is it the High Court judgment or a Supreme Court one? Your Lordship, it is a Supreme Court. It's a very old decision of 1963. Is it overruled? I know. Because tax laws keep changing. Did, did you find a single law? No, Your Lordship. It's not overruled? No, Your Lordship. And this also is just speaking about without authority of law. By using coercive machinery. What is coercive here? There is nothing coercive. Nobody is forcing you to invest in crypto. What yes, is yes. coercive? 
How is that judgment applicable here? Your Lordship, the council would like to emphasize on the point like the authority, authority of law and the infringement of the fundamental right. For that, yeah, yeah, but, uh, but, but cannot be a judgment which has to be read for every set of facts, right? Yes, it can be. It can be para materia as well for for that set of material facts. Yes. Is it a precedent which needs to be followed for all the taxation purposes? No, right? No, 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 no. Otherwise, then our role ends. You fire and it's allowed. So, what my learned brother is trying to ask is the coercive machinery that I mean, we are because you don't know the facts. We are contemplating or at least thinking that there is something which is required by the law to be done. Over here, we are not asking, or rather, the government is not asking to invest in cryptos. Yes, yes. it's a discretion. As far as the the question of investor protection is concerned, that's left open. Not we are not even talking on that. We are only on the taxation part. Yes, yes. So is I mean you will have to correlate the facts of that case which you are relying upon to this case. Then we'll be able to understand. So you let us know what was the machinery was not the not what not what was held. What was held we understood. Yeah, but what were what were the facts? What was that thing asset machinery which was in question? As the cryptos and the NFTs and the digital currency is in question here. What was the question therein? Yes, your lordship. I, I just, uh, would like to think uh, and say, think out loudly. What that judgment is speaking about is this: any act which is uh, made should not be used as a threat to the citizens. Is what I feel. Yeah, because the lines, if you see, uh, the court held that the imposition of tax without the authority of law. Now that cannot be considered by this court because there is. The law for which they can tax, and that being so, a threat by the state by using the coercive machinery of the impugned act. So what they're saying is the impugned act would was the coercive machinery. I know, that, I know. That's that's essentially not the asset. Asset, yeah, 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 yeah. It is the act. It's an adjective. That, uh, yes, yes. The legislature is what they are speaking about. So what I think, speaker, you should understand is the there is no there's how is this law a threat. How is uh, anything uh, compulsion? There is no threat to anyone under this law. And if you feel special, no, your lordship, the uh, when there is a, some risk or some loss or defrauding is taking place, with, go to go to the criminal case. court, file a criminal case, file a cyber crime case, file a consumer regular, protection. Uh, yes, go go everywhere. You can we we can give you liberties, and we do not even need to give you liberty because the law is clear. What remains here? Because no, the the no. council is asking for a state of provision of law, stating that the on the on someone who has been defrauded on the cryptocurrencies, we are we asking specifically on when someone has been council. You are again again it's investor protection. Point. See council again, you don't protection. What uh, the, my brother judge and we uh, both of us are asking is how is this section bad in law? That's all. Your only answer till now has only been that it is uh, people are getting defrauded. They are not aware of the risks. That's all. We do not see anything else. And then you gave a declaration in this court openly that if there is a tax lapse, you are happy with the law. With no, let us hear the other side. I let us hear the other side. Uh, I request my brother judge to just give me two minutes. And in two sure. minutes.
if you go for 2.4 that is also the same no welfare welfare of the citizens yes you know so that is i mean if i may ask isn't is this the central point of argument whole case no lord should the council has stated that for the the role of the government is to promote the welfare and mm. when things when some when there is no provision you know stating the tax on that which is uh, which is not being legalized and so it, so if if uh, i understood and so if i put it this way that if some act is there which does not have the assent from the government as such yes right so hence it cannot be taxed are you trying to say that yes you know acha so you 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 are you are sure on that that if there is something which is already a, a a given thing in the society which is not backed by government regulations and rules cannot be taxed yes is this know. your case how now the leading question to this is has there ever been instances wherein whatever citations you given very nice even from that you can cite one has there ever been an instance where the parliament thought that now since we are taxing this we need to regularize this yes which one the, which the which council did in able to due to the lack of internet connection no no so i'll repeat it again yeah yeah i'll repeat it again my question is has there ever been an instance that the parliament thought that since we are taxing this transactions or this set of businesses or profession now it is imperative that we should also pass a legislation for protection of the people involved in it over here they are investors have there ever been such an instance that no, they first no. taxed that they first taxed because of uh, some proactive citizens like you you people have invoked the right for jurisdictions of the high court and the supreme court they've got some order because of which the parliament in their wisdom have now come up with the rules and regulations are you trying to say now by the i mean supposedly if we are in your favor you're trying to say that this tax goes away still the transaction can be worked upon or transaction needs to be stopped if the, the crypto transaction, transaction something yes the, so you are trying to say the transaction also need to be stopped right because it's not regulated yes yes, yes. you know sir that's that is there yeah? you are giving it under an undertaking yes you know that if the tax re regime is rolled back it is as good as stating that or it is held that no crypto exchange can happen anymore the the council is not talking on the point that there can be no crypto exchange or dealing with the crypto currency yeah, you just stated right because because if if we are not taxing you are saying we are not, we, we, if we are not taxing then it should not also be used your lord should the council would like to emphasize that legalize it and even though when there is a legalizing act of cryptocurrencies the problem is not going to be solved and there is no go and there is no there is not going to be a defrauding happening it will soon get solved it will not dissolves a whole amount it will but, slowly but uh, council council you, you should understand one thing that we are not in the uh, we are not here to see how to protect the country we are under the uh, roster of a tax regime okay in the exactly. tax yes in the tax roster this court will only look into whether this is uh, do you need to legalize it or no when it is settled law you can tax even illegal in uh, business income from illegal businesses this entire argument of just legalizing it and legalizing it i think my brother and myself do not uh, understand its importance i hope my let's go to yes totally agree let's move on to tg at 10 now we will give you uh, speaker one will give you some time at the end yes the other side may from the government side you know, please proceed permissions granted please move ahead all right uh, warm greetings to everyone present here uh, the council would uh, argue on the issue one whether or not the government is justified in taxing digital currency digital assets and nfts which is not legalized and uh, 
as the first sub issue uh, will argue on the fact that whether vds can come under the ambit of capital assets uh, whereby a tax can be imposed under under the income tax act 1961 uh, before dwelling into the nitty gritties of how uh, the before you go on to all these statements there was a declaration made by the council too from the petitioner that if you are going to agree for any tax lapse they are happy with the provision of law what would you like to say on that we would like to hear first Uh, uh, your lordship, a uh, tax lab is imposed when there exists a, a significant differentia uh, between various attributes of virtual digital assets. Uh, like in the present case, there is cryptocurrency and non-fungible tokens. But we, uh, as the respondent, are arguing that there there is no significant difference when it comes to the usage of cryptocurrencies and NFTs. And uh, thereby, uh, I don't think there is a requirement of uh, uh, you know a tax lab as such, and a single tax lab of thirty percent. On all the attributes of VDS is justified in the present case. No, so is it is it that you don't think, or those are the instructions on which you are stating this? So you use the phrase "I don't think." So is it your stand or the government's stand? Uh, your lordship uh, exists in the entire functioning and the intricacies of the framework of uh, cryptocurrencies and NFTs, which uses a common method of blockchain uh, uh, blockchain method, which is a sharing and management system. Uh, cryptocurrency is actually uh, it, it, it's a, it's a digital currency which is uh, uh, which comes into place through a process called uh, cryptography and uh, it is fungible in nature and the entire process is uh, a kind of process uh, uh, whereby we can use cryptocurrencies to buy certain uh, virtual digital assets which exist in the form of non fungible tokens uh, your lordship uh, for example we will try to understand this uh, from a very uh, basic analogy in the real world uh, we use the currency the physical currency to buy certain unique physical objects uh, right coming back to this uh, situation we are using cryptocurrency to buy a certain uh, uh, to buy certain virtual assets which exist in the form of non fungible what can a virtual asset be uh, your lordship a virtual asset can be anything it can include a gif a jpeg a digital drawing a video or a song or in the present case any video also for instance Uh, which has been there in the form of in 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 the digital so already form. as of now all these things if you want to buy a video a picture anything you can still pay using your uh, uh, money from your account right are there countries allowing you to pay using uh, cryptocurrency till today like like how we have google pay phone pay uh, is there any country accepting payment via uh, cryptocurrency as of now as uh, we do get the money Yes, your lordship. Uh, I would like to uh, take. Uh, I would like you to uh, focus on the paragraph four in our memorial. Uh, I have mentioned. Uh, we have mentioned the case J K Trust Bombay versus C I T. And under that case, it was which para and which page? Uh, it is on page number eight, paragraph four. Page eight, paragraph four. One point. Is so it that one point? No, that uh, this is uh, page number eight, main body of arguments, point number four. But this is with respect to that being recognized as capital assets. Yes, a lot, sir. But in many countries, such as US and UK, uh, uh, these uh, uh, virtual virtual currencies. What was my question? My question was. Yes, a lot. What was my question? Did you understand my question? The uh, way uh, we are doing the UPI transactions, can we do it with the cryptos? Not yes, for, not for the purposes of considering capital that as capital assets. Yes, a lot, sir. But there exists a substantial similarity between the working of an NFT and a crypto. So that is that is what they are saying. That if 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 you we go by your analogy, the other side wins the case. You are trying to say that we go and buy something in the market through the cash or the currency. For that purpose, when they earn that, they pay income tax. When they pay income tax, there is there is a difference which is given as per their slabs, because how much you earn and all those aspects are there. So that is what they are saying that if you go to the market and purchase it, that is what the analogy they wanted. So then, why don't you give them what they want? Why don't you give them a slab system? Yes, uh, yes, Your Lordship. Uh, I would again like to reiterate the point uh, that cryptocurrencies and NFTs they work on the similar method 
or framework of using a blockchain technology and true, it, true, true. It but but that can be used they can be used as a replacement of the normal currency right yes your lord on normal currency are, are you or okay with normal replacing currency it? income is like my brother is saying are you okay with replacing our currency with this crypto yes your lordship we are okay with it but in the present case we have started observing in our country that there is a wide usage of cryptocurrency and many people are using cryptocurrencies to buy nfts so by imposing an rb uh, by imposing a tax rate of 30% we have tried to regulate uh, the person so you are trying you you are trying to say that instead of giving a consumer redressal or some protection to the investors you have tried to curtail the use of it yes. and that is why the question from my learned brother that i are you all right if this being replaced with the normal currency which is given by the apex bank is a yes. bank right yes sir not sure uh, but so, you are, so answer answer this first question are you all right with replacement yes or no yes uh, yes sir not sure we are all right with replacing uh, normal currency in place of cryptocurrency for purchasing uh, nfts no not nfts if i want to buy groceries can i buy it mm. and once i buy it are you all right not for nfts and over there also i have one question once you are saying that both both of them use the same technology but to buy nfts you need crypto so how they are like you know they might be a like to buy a dollar you need rupees but dollars and rupees have a huge difference right yes a lot sir but even if we are considering the ambit and the realm of cryptocurrencies mm. for uh, for instance there are various types of cryptocurrencies being prevalent in the market uh, uh, exactly that is what Bitcoin their case is and ethereum uh, there yeah. exists a difference uh, between the functioning of the two and uh, if mm. i want uh, if i want to uh, you know purchase 10 ethereum uh, from uh, the 10 bitcoins which i have in my digital wallet uh th that would actually uh, not be substantive in nature to use that's that that's what their case is that is what their case is you give them the slap system slap that system. is what they argued they have taken this very example which you have just stated so how is i mean now i'm i fail to understand how is it in their favor and how is it also in your favor because according to me it's in their favor you tell me how it's in your favor you yourself are saying there's a difference yes sir lord sir there has to be a slap system a you're all right ah, and if if what my learned brother has asked that if you agree to that there ends the case uh, you your can have a good cup of coffee uh, your lordship uh, in the present case if you are talking about mm -hmm. any virtual digital asset even if there is no law uh, legalizing the entire framework of the usage of cryptocurrency for buying anything and everything in the market uh we are saying that uh, the the uh, the assets the virtual digital assets are still amenable to taxation and certain provisions which exist in the income tax we are act. not disputing that council same thing you are going on explaining further what are these currencies and all do not go into technical jargon we have simply asked you one question that is are you okay to give a slab rate you give some reasoning for that why you do not want to give slab rate you said that there is no difference between them they are more or less the same was your first answer now you have conflicted your own statement by saying that when one purchases from his digital wallet there is a huge difference sometimes for which my brother just spoke about the rupee and the dollar what is the what is the reason that you do not want to give a slab rate stick to that point do not go into technical jargon of what is currency and what is crypto what is uh, blockchain do not confuse the bench here we can and the second question and yes. the second question is very open ended question that you know if you are just imposing cost in a way or in a form of tax only with a purpose or the object of curtailing the practice or the use then the petitioners do have a case that you also fear the investor protection is not being considered you should have a rules and regulations and a real time framework for the set purposes because you just stated that now we are trying to curtail it by putting 30% slab rate so can we take it on record that 30% slab rate is justified only for the purposes of curtailing this kind of transactions yes or no 
Yes, sir, Lord. Answer both the questions. I am done now. You answer my brother's question. I am done because you, you just stated. Uh, yes, yes, sir, Lord. Sir, uh, I would like to uh, pick up uh, the second question which was asked uh, with respect to uh, whether uh, you know uh, uh, the entire framework is uh, amenable to taxation just because uh, uh, bringing certain regulations in the market. Uh, your your lordship, uh, your lordship. The respondents uh, believe that uh, taxation is actually very important to bring certain regulation. Even in the real world, when there was not go into of intent of the legislature, do not go into intent of taxation. Simple question had an answer of yes and no. You're just beating around the bush. Firstly, you started with repeating the question of the, my learned brother. Then you started with the intent of taxation in India. We know why tax is implemented. We, they have to pay our salaries, no? Something they have to pay. So they need to earn money, they are taxing you. They, you want roads, they are taxing you. Simple. So you answer in yes or no first. Do not repeat the question now. Yes, sir, we know sir's question. Yes, sir, Lord. Please answer sir's question first. Yes, sir, Lordship. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, taxation is imposed uh, to uh, bring the uh, regulation. In, in so, now is now a leading question is is government even contemplating having regulations in place? Yes, a lot, sir. Is government even contemplating to have regulations in place? Uh, yeah, uh, your lordship uh, by imposing a 30% tax on the VDAs, I think this is the first step which the government has taken to uh, to uh, to bring the regularity in the crypto market, uh, which uh, the government. So you want to bring you want to bring yeah you want to bring the regularity by taxing. That is all right. I understood. This is the first step. You are testing yes, testing sir, the waters. Second, if at all you feel that even after paying 30% tax, there are the issue, there are issues of consumer protection, investor protections. Is your government even contemplating to have some kind of safeguard mechanism in place or not? Uh, no, your lordship, we haven't uh, have any uh, other method or modus operandi to bring the regulation in the crypto market. Uh, but I think the first step is in the right direction. And uh, Council, uh, we should see the history of the government. The history of the government was first they issued a law banning crypto. Then we interfered and said, no, you cannot ban crypto. Then you went and taxed crypto or the currency or whatever you call it. Now you say we are actually wanting to regularize it. Don't you think this entire uh, chain of thought, there is no consistency? You're so inconsistent in your views. You ban it, we revoke it, then you tax it without even legalizing it. So I'll ask you a simple question. Though it is a settled law, you can earn, the government can earn income from illegal sources. Say tomorrow, uh, will the government start taking tax from uh, prostitutes, pimps, brokers? Will they ta start taking tax for, taxes from uh, illegal human trafficking? Will they start taking taxes from illegal businesses of such immoral natures? Would that not mean that the government is in a way supporting encouragement of these activities? Uh, your Lordship, uh, uh, answering to your first question, uh, which was with respect to the move which the government uh, took to ban the cryptocurrency, uh, uh, the government believes that uh, uh, since there was no regulation at that point of time which regulated the entire framework of crypto, there was a need to ban the cryptocurrency and we still, we, we are adamant on our stand that uh, there exists high irregularity. Did you, did you file market. a review before the court challenging uh, the order? Did you file a review? If you are so vehemently opposing banning crypto which we set aside, did you file a review petition? Are you aware of that? Uh, no, sir. We haven't filed a review petition. Then enough. Then you don't oppose. If you were so concerned about uh, vehemently contesting, the Supreme Court passed a judgment. You want to do something, you will file a review, which you didn't. So you, uh, your stand is not at all consistent with your actions. Actions always... Can we, also, can we also take it on record that as on date, government is not contemplating to have regulations in place as stated by you? 
uh, you all not uh, are you are you, uh, are you speaking on instructions uh, your lordship the government in its present case though it is not practically possible to bring that regulation at this point of time but the government is actually contemplating uh, to bring uh, in in the market the uh, the centralized digital currency however trying to bring the order. indian digital rupee that is not that is not the same as these currencies the virtual digital assets and the digital rupees completely different how can yes, you bring both of them under the same umbrella yeah i mean you 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 try and say that 10 rupees of my note is it exactly that 10 rupees of e rupee answer is yes but 10 rupees of my currency note is it 10 bitcoins answer is no right so there's no comparison there it's just the having the physical one in a virtual one which we nonetheless already had in the we already have UPIs. in the form of upis right so yeah. i i do not understand now just it's a way of telling the government wants to say so do, do you have anything your, else no, council no. do you have anything else to say 30 seconds anything else yes. Uh, yes, sir, Lordship. Uh, uh, we contend that in the present case, uh, the virtual digital assets they come under the purview of the capital assets, which have been laid in many landmark cases. Also, uh, even in cases uh, whereby there is a business income or an investment which comes in the form of virtual digital assets, uh, it is amenable to taxation. Okay. Uh, my co-counsel, my co-counsel, will argue on the constitutionality of the VDS. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lordship. So shall we start for council 2 please 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 <clears throat> yes please start so council when you speak about that it is constitutional okay uh, it's not violating which provisions and well, what would your statement be uh, i would like to just pause for a minute uh, the rounds i just want to ask was the pleadings that is you call it as uh, uh, written submissions right was it exchange between both the parties yes yes they have been exchange okay uh court master i hope you have not started the time you have paused given them the benefit yes sir yes, yes. not started. okay yes let issue uh, let two us. speaker two Uh, greetings of the day, uh, Lord Chief. Uh, uh, I may please. Uh, this is Divyan Sharma, a uh, council appearing for uh, respondent in the matter of exercise. Please proceed. Uh, Union of uh, Parliamento, and will be uh, dealing with the second issue of this uh, particular. Please case. proceed. Yes, Lord Chief. So, so second issue uh, before this hon honourable court is that whether or not uh, not section uh, section one one five BBH of income tax is violative of constitu uh, constitution of Parliament. To which the council humbly submitted before the honourable court that uh, that the present uh, uh, that the, uh, in, in this case uh, the the move by the uh, government is uh, is constitutional in, uh, and does not violate uh, any uh, right. Of... Where is the rationality in this in this uh, kind of a law? Where is the uh, differentiation? There is no intelligible differentia here. You just want to. Uh, Uh, not follow the basics. Uh, cryptocurrency is nothing like a. It's just like any market, right? So every market, when it's subject to its risks, why would you not permit them to set off their losses? Why will you not permit them to carry forward their losses? What is this? Section, ah, uh, one one. Ah, uh, this section sub clause B, under the not notwithstanding clause, is completely. Uh, against uh, rationality so uh, uh, it is humbly submitted before uh, the honorable court uh, that uh, there is the reason uh, behind uh, uh, not giving the, the losses to be set off because it it can it can be actually uh, uh, it can actually be uh, 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 disappeared or uh, there is there is no uh, uh, proper 
uh, method or, or mechanism to calculate the losses of this uh, this particular uh, virtual digital assets and 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 there is a high why do you say so if if i am if i invest 1 lakh and it it becomes 15 lakhs tomorrow you know how to calculate the income tax and take it right but when there is a loss you don't know how there is a loss this is a very uh, pick and choose method to suit your uh, to suit your pocket i must say at the cost of the citizens uh, you're you're uh, you're not uh, but but one can uh, uh, but one can uh, easily uh, easily uh, set off your their losses uh, by uh, by misrepresentation as well so that you have a remedy under law to investigate into the matter. There is forensic audits that go on today. NCLTs have ordered forensic audits in so many matters to understand how transactions are taking place. Uh, how can you how can you say that we will not know there is or there is a misrepresentation or suppression? You can very well uh, take up steps. For what do we have such uh, powerful investigative agencies in the country? Are you uh, stating that your government is powerless? Uh, so, uh, so, uh, certainly not your lordship, but uh, but the uh, but uh, but the government uh, until uh, the, the mechanism uh, to uh, to detect that uh, losses and to detect all the uh, uh, aspect related to virtual digital assets, uh, we have to uh, we we must take time and uh, it, it, as you, uh, you know your lordship that uh, the the uh, republic of uh, parliament is a. Uh, uh, is, a, is a democratic country is the largest uh, largest uh, democracy so, so how is that related to tax so largest so, largest democracy that's why you're earning a lot of money from tax uh, yes yes sir also I'm, I'm just coming to uh, to that point also uh, 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 that point uh, is that that the, the government is uh, has been busy in uh, lots of other uh, uh, other uh, aspects as well but the government is uh, thinking about uh, uh, doing the same and uh, Government is is, is uh, trying to make uh, that mechanism, and until that mechanism has been, uh, uh, government is busy. Did you make that statement? Uh, the court is very free. Government, uh, your lordship, government is not uh, not be busy as such. My brother, uh, judge, and I are not simply sitting over here. We have a lot of matters to be disposed. We are not very free people. Government is busy. What is this statement? Is it a court of law or some parliamentary session? Okay. Indeed, your lordship, I, I beg your your pardon, lordship. I am just trying to say that the government is trying to build up a, a mechanism through which we can. Uh, so you first build up the mechanism, then you tax it. We will set aside this provision. Your, your lordship, but but the taxation is a is, is purely constitutional in nature and it's council. Not, uh, why take, a, take, take a deep breath, calm down. You have water with you, drink water. Thank you, Alvaro. Huh. Calm down, don't worry. It's only a competition. Okay, proceed. So, so the council submits uh, before this honourable court that it is uh, it is purely uh, it is purely the job of the government to tax on any uh, subject and uh, it is purely constitutional and is not violated by any uh, uh, constitutional principles and it is uh, and uh, under article article 19, uh, 19 law six uh, there has been a reasonable restriction on the exercise of power of uh, trade and uh, businesses. And taxation can be uh, classified as a uh, one of the reasonable restriction uh, on the uh, right of uh, right to uh, trade in business. Lordship. Okay. I would uh, I would also like to draw the attention of the uh, honourable uh, court uh, to the case law which has been mentioned in the paragraph uh, in the page number eleven, paragraph number fourteen, uh, which uh, also uh, memorial submitted before this honourable uh, court uh, uh, to the case of Minister of Finance versus Smith. In which uh, court observed that income tax can only be, can is not na not necessarily restricted to imposing tax only on lawful businesses. The aim here is to bring the gains acquired under the heads of tax, but by doing so, government is not uh, not taking part in illegal enterprises. This is further submitted uh, supplemented by the section 
224 uh, of uh, in Income Tax Act 1961, which states that it creates an obligation to pay tax on all the income received, irrespective if it is illegal or legal. So it is uh, it is a purely constitutional in nature to tax uh, any uh, 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 any of the uh, whether the thing is illegal or uh, illegal. And uh, in this particular matter, your lordship, uh, the uh, virtual digital assets has been uh, has been. The, 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 the nation is not uh, clear uh, uh, until now. Now, let us read para page number 12, last page, wherein uh, the Vodafone International versus Union of India is cited, wherein this court has stated that power to impose tax is essentially a legislative function, which finds in its expression Article 265, article has to be capital, 265 of the Constitution of Parliament. Oh, Article 265 states that no tax shall be levied except by the authority of law. Kindly yes, explain what authority of law you had or you still have to tax this essence. Indeed, Your Lordship. Uh, uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Your Lordship for bringing this issue uh, uh, the, of utmost importance. I have to answer that uh, question. Uh, Your Lordship, uh, we are taxing uh, uh, the virtual digital assets, which has been uh, defined in uh, sec uh, Section 247A uh, through an amendment. Uh, and also, we are taxing uh, the virtual digital assets under the ambit of Income Tax Act. And this is, this is the authority of the government. So income tax, because there is an Income Tax Act in place in the country, you can tax everything and anything. Now, adding to my uh, brother judge's question, you have the authority. Say from tomorrow, can you start taxing uh, air? You already are taxing uh, water, if I'm not wrong. Drinking water has some charges. I, are you going to start taxing air from tomorrow since you have the authority? Where, where, where do we draw that line? Yeah, because now the oxygen is very rare, especially yes, in yes. the capital of the country. You might yes. want to, right? Because now the yes. chief minister has also placed in some purifiers in the public places, which is for the public use. You might want to tax it. Yes. Would you and start you're, you're saying you have the authority. Yeah, you have the authority, right? Uh, indeed, your lordship. Uh, Lordship, uh, for that question, I would like to uh, like to point out uh, the intention of uh, this court that the, the time the time has been changing very fast, and we have to change with the time. If, if, if the situation so, you will tax air. No, the answer is yes. I'm, so you I'm will tax the... air in the future. My God, <laughs> we need better remuneration now. <laughs> I don't think. I think the government should uh, understand it's a social welfare state, right? Are we aware of the preamble? Socialist is a miss. The word socialist is missing in the intentions of the legislature completely, right? Uh, Government 30... employees will definitely be given free. Um, I assume. I think my brother and myself would have free oxygen. What about the people? If we don't. Yes. We have better. We need better remunerations. Yes. How can you have such a statement that just because you have the authority, you will do anything under the sky? Uh, to answer that question, your lordship, my, my 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 point is that if if the uh, situation arises in the uh, in the future, that makes it uh, makes it imperative for to do the uh, by the government. We they have will to tax do. it. They will tax it. Okay, we got your yeah, point. We are not, we we are are not, not going. We are, a, we are not going into a very nice future. Is what uh, I understand. Our future generations are going to be very upset. Yes, yes. Proceed. Uh, also, uh, I would like to uh, point out uh, the attention of this honorable court uh, that uh, in the case of uh, TA Qureshi versus CIT, uh, the, this uh, this honorable court has held that uh, cases are to be decided by the court on the principle, uh, on the legal principle, and not on moral uh, view. Law is different from morality. So, that's so, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Where is where is the backing? How are you be able to tax it? You see, you're saying very simply, sitar because of Income Tax Act, we can. Impose tax. We are uh, we are also not on morality. Your lordship, but uh, uh, so we are here. We are here to you know, give our justification, give some clarity to the laws of the land, not the morality here. As far as today's case is concerned, I mean, we may sit on the morality aspect later on when a new writ is someday filed for the investor protection. 
But But as far as the taxes, uh, taxing air, taxing air, we have to look into the aspect. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure this will come come up before this bench. Yes. Yes. We hope the roaster falls here then. Yes. (laughs) To answer that, uh, to to answer that question, Lord, the air is not uh, very equivalent to what uh, the virtual digital assets are. Actually. No. 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 We have. We have air purifiers now. We have and. I mean, for the, even if you're going into, we have air purifiers. We never thought before COVID that air purifiers would be used for this purpose. Air puri- purifiers were there, but we had no idea that every office, every household would have it. Before, before and, and maybe three Diwali's or four Diwali's, Delhi household never had a never purifier. had. Now they have it in every household. So yes, as you rightly stated, because of the change we are changing, and you are because of the authority you're gonna be taxing. If if there is a situation arises, your lordship in the future, I, I think it has arisen. I'm giving I'm giving a hint that has arisen. It's high time you 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 know tax oxygen because I mean with with due respect, I mean we are we, we as generation we are facing that issue. So what is this authority of law council? That that's what we are uh, irrespective of whatever we want to tax air, water, anything. Uh, just because agree. income tax act is there you can tax anything and everything under the sun right or, may, or maybe the sun as well yeah sunlight too maybe you never yeah. know uh, your lordship we are taxing uh, we are taxing uh, virtual digital uh, currency and, uh, under section 2 uh, 224 of income tax act which which gives the definition mm-hmm. of uh, income uh, income tax mm-hmm. and what does it and, state uh, virtual digital uh, and uh, uh, transaction from Yes, sir. Lordship, uh, uh, to to read that section two two twenty four in income tax uh, nineteen ninety five income includes profit or gains, uh, which can be included uh, in the case of virtual digital uh, assets also. And uh, for for your answer, your uh, uh, second is a dividend voluntary con- contribution received by a trust created wholly or partly for a charitable or religious purposes, or or by an institution established wholly or partly for uh, such purposes. Uh, coming to the third point. Uh, the value of any prerequisite or profit in the lieu of luxury taxable uh, under uh, clauses uh, two and three of section seventeen. So, council, are... you tell us under which of these provisions of this section are you deriving va- uh, validity to tax virtual digital assets? Just tell us that one line. Uh, under section two twenty four uh, sub clause uh, one, uh, uh, income includes profit and gains. Okay, so now when profit and gains can be taxed, how can you tax without setting off losses? Why? Why is that uh, not permitted? There is no rational for that. Okay, you have the authority to tax profits. How can you not permit setting off losses? And how can you not permit carry forward of losses to the next financial year? This is allowed in all businesses where uh, they incur losses. They uh, carry forward the losses in the future. Why are you not considering that here? Uh, because your lordship, uh, virtual digital assets, the transaction of virtual uh, digital uh, digital assets is, is not uh, very similar to the transaction of uh, of uh, other uh, commodities. If we see uh, your lordship, the the losses, uh, the, the, the there there has been risk, uh, risk of losses uh, which which can be uh, which which is very pertinent. To if if we give. Uh, uh, if uh, if an individual wants to wants to uh, invest in the uh, virtual digital assets, he, he can uh, he can uh, 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 set off the losses which, which is uh, he incurred in pre- previous in the past times. So, he cannot set off as per your law. Yeah, that, that's why we are not uh, given them uh, the uh, opportunity to, uh, to set off the losses because we, we want. I do not understand your the logic in this. Yes, yes Lord, sir. Uh, uh, I would like to clear uh, this. As, uh, as stated by my co- uh, my, my co counsel that we... as my brother judge understood the logic for not setting off uh, losses, I I do not understand. Uh, yes, the bench, is, the bench is not able to understand this hyper technical argument you put forth. Please explain. Now I have I, I I you you answer this and then I have two questions in yes or no. You answer this and then two questions and then times up. Yes, no more submissions. Yes, your uh, lordship. My, my, as my as stated by and submitted by, by my co counsel is that government uh, is trying to act, uh, actually uh, re, uh, restrict uh, the uh, uh, 
the individuals or the people to uh, actually indulge in the, uh, in the, the so high risk business of virtual digital assets so we are we as a we have uh, not uh, given them opportunity just to prevent uh, the, them from the losses which are, which may uh, they might incur in the future because uh, the, there is the involvement of risk is so high in, in the transaction virtual digital assets understood understood now i have two questions direct questions the first one is that you are trying to, and that also le is a leading question from what you just uh, stated in the stock market don't you think there's a risk are you taxing everything from the stock market does someone have to pay 30% tax for the gains in the stock market yes or no actually lord should be uh, you are not audible to us uh, we, we are facing some uh, uh, technical issue can you please yeah yeah i i will i will i will repeat yes, sir, the lord question sir. is are you are you are you taxing are you taxing the stock market the gains which are earned from trading of the stocks are you are you taxing it yes sir lord sir uh, how 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 much how much is there uh, the rate like of all 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 of all four councils can answer this what is the answer are we taxing yeah you please go at speaker one but only this answer uh, we are taxing at the rate of uh, 15 percent uh, i believe 50 15 percent is, is taxed it is under section 111a of the income tax act so the government mm. considers shares and securities to be short-term capital gains and mm. it is taxed at 15 percent and, and if it's more than one year, then it it's ten percent. Ten percent under Section one hundred and twelve A of Income Tax Act. True. So yeah, now, to coming back to your question, Speaker One, you are trying to say that this is more dangerous than the stock market. That's first, right? Because then you are you know, categorically stating thirty percent. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. second question: Are you also going to impose uh, GST, IGST, CGST on this, or only income tax you are contemplating? Mm -hmm. You're also, you're not audible to... I'm not audible. I'm, I think I'm audible to... Yes, uh, yes, his lordship is audible to all of us. I Again, think. I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Are you going to go for GST, IGST or CGST? Speaker, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least from my side. I, so, I think it is... Can you uh, hear us? I think there's a technical well, glitch. From other, other team is also able to hear. Yes, so. all of us can hear you. Yes, sir, you're audible. You at least speak up, uh, TGA 10, speaker 1 or 2. At least speak up. Are you able to hear us? Lordship, uh, actually your voice is, voice is breaking in between. What, what can I make out from your uh, statement is that uh, you, uh, that uh, will you will, uh, be uh, taxing uh, the virtual digital assets uh, under, under the ambit of GST, I think. Uh, that's why Yes, I, I, true, true. Yeah, that's the question. Yes, Please answer. Uh, uh, to that, uh, to answer that question, uh, we we are we are thinking about uh, to tax uh, it. We are, we, so we are thirty plus plus. So it's going to be thirty plus plus somewhere around twenty eight percent. You will tax right under the luxury. So twenty eight plus thirty. I do not understand the requirements under the new laws that the government wants. Council, when you are saying that income tax is payable. When you say income tax is payable, uh, how do you say GST is also payable? It is not written in the law. You contemplate to issue, you uh, uh, enact another law as well because your section is very clear. It says the income tax payable shall be the aggregate of whatever, whatever. Now, as my brother judge says, you say that you are in contemplating of GST, CGST, IGST, SGST, everything. What is the reason for uh, uh, treating this particular transaction in such a restrictive manner? Do you want people in India not to do uh, trading in virtual digital assets? I think that is the ultimate aim of the government. You're just trying to smoke that, them. It's very clear. That's what even they. That's what even they agreed to. At least as far as this hearing is concerned. Uh, to answer that question, we are, we are also to, uh, we, we, what we are saying is that there is a, a involvement of a risk in, in this uh, business. So if you want true, to, true, true. if you want to indulge in that business willingly, you have to pay this amount of tax. 
if you want to you, that is what they are saying that is what they are saying because there is a risk please safeguard us please save us yes that, and then and they are all right with taxing 30% they are saying let us let us have safe roads then we will have a helmet that's what they are saying and you are saying you please wear helmet otherwise you're going to be killed but you are not ready to give them the safe roads safe huh? roads i am done as far as i am concerned i i only feel that uh, the the government wants to start taxing everything under the sky that's that's how the government is seeming to move forward but council if you say if you have a risk then you want to tax it so living also is a risk especially after covid we never know how life is and how and short it's going to be so you, based on risk you will tax okay that has never been the logic ever under the taxation law and we are not going to implement any such laws for such reasons i think my brother judge and myself though the petitioners could not put forth their case but this would go for various other reasons which we have you know put forth we might in favor of petitioners yeah as far as not, the judgment is concerned not the criteria not based of the, on the arguments the, yes yes yeah. and not yeah. based on the arguments of the uh, petition also the petitioners arguments were not the examples were uh, i cannot even comment on the same yes uh, we'll conduct the time what's is up. next what's next yogita court master we will proceed with the rebuttal sir uh, i would uh, since we have given so much time it's almost 1 hour and 40 minutes so we can maybe i maybe i if you can give because speaker one had his hand up and i promised him i'll give you 60 seconds either one of us would not speak go ahead for 60 seconds <laughs> i'm muting myself thank you very much thank you very much your lordship so the council uh, so the as the lordship the lordship had rightly pointed out i uh, i just want uh, permission to share my screen so that i can share my memo quickly uh, one second you keep on uh, saying meanwhile your time but, is running so as as a lordship had pointed out here is the statement that the petitioners have also made the refusal to permit any deduction other than the cost of acquisition to permit the set off of losses and the requirement to deduct tax is clearly evident of the intention to discourage invents investments in the virtual digital assets so this has been the only intention and there is been no other specific intention of the government beyond taxing this and it has it comes forth as a very a decision that is taken in uh, in so much hurry that they just wanted to tax it they didn't want to uh, give any chances to reduce the losses they are able to calculate the profit but when it comes to calculating the losses they feel there is no mechanism for the same so that has also been happening and the speaker this one, is this is who is this is who's pleading yours or theirs this is petitioner's Petition. pleading his own pleading your pleading yes yes good and as speaker one of uh, as my learned friend had also pointed out the uh, lordship just one more minute if i can extend 30 seconds close the screen go ahead yes so as speaker one of the my learned friend had also pointed out that uh, they they assume this cryptocurrency is to be capital assets and still section 111a is taxing capital assets already at 15% and triple uh, 112 a of income tax act is taxing them at 15% so why then this new section has been brought in by them so this is a move which does not thank you council thank you thank you we we'll stop you there thank you yes, uh, we understood DJ but we understood what you're trying to say tj 10 sorry but uh yes a lot are we supposed to answer the rebut or uh, we should wait yeah, the rebut to the their entire case right? their re it's a rebuttal you reply to whatever you wish just we have to rebut uh, uh right uh, your lordship uh, the petitioners had argued uh, that uh, they had argued and they had even accepted that there is no provision under the constitution of parliament to, to legalize the Working of the crypto assets and the virtual digital assets per se, but still uh, we as the government have believed that there is a need to uh, bring taxation on these virtual digital assets. But the petitioners were not able to explain as to why, despite the absence of any law dealing with the VDS, how uh, this taxation is actually harming or how that uh, taxation is injuring the constitutional rights, uh, primarily including nineteen one a. 
uh, under the constitution of parliamento because still uh, one can use uh, virtual digital assets uh, as a mode of exchange